Hi guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Part 13 of WWE 2011 Year in Review, or DVD and Blu-ray Review. My third or fourth attempt at trying to film this now. Fingers crossed it'll go, go okay. I'm going to try and just see this through as quick as I can. I do apologise for that, guys. It's just becoming annoying now to have to keep redoing this. So... Here's the cover artwork with CM Punk um, with that cool ice lolly, you know, that they used to sell back in the days of like ice lolly bars, chocolate bars uh, of the old WWF uh, superstars, Macho Man, Hulk Hogan and stuff on, and, and other people, sorry, on, on the ice cream bars. But yeah, that, I don't know if they officially ever released those again. I heard rumours they may have done back, though, uh, back then when he was, uh, you know, he did mention them on Raw or something as well. I'm not too sure. But I like what they've done with the ice cream bar with the table, ladder and chair picture on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so this is the Blu-ray UK release by Silver Vision, 15 certificate. <laughs> There's the, uh, the awesome looking TLC ice cream bar again. There's the spine with the uh, table, ladder, and chair. Tables, ladders, and chairs, sorry, guys. Three hours, 58 minute runtime. Special features included Josh Matthews interviews with Daniel Bryan from TLC, 18th of December 2011. Blu ray exclusive content includes Monday Night Raw uh, from 12th of December 2011. Trending Superstar of the Year Fatal Four Way Match Zack Ryder versus Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler versus Cody Rhodes, CM Punk and Randy Orton versus The Miz and Alberto Del Rio, Mark Henry versus John Cena. SmackDown 16th of December 2011 had uh, Big Show versus Jack Swagger, Randy Orton and Zack Ryder versus Wade Barrett and Dolph Ziggler. And uh, they, I don't know if you can just by make the match listing out there on the back, guys, if you want to give it a quick pause now, if I bring it in. Because of the colour clash with the black and red, I don't know why it does that with this camera lens. Hoping to get a new camera for Christmas, guys. Fingers crossed I will. I have been a good boy and I have, I have asked Santa for one. <laughs> I have been a good bunny. Anyway. Carnage reigned supreme at the last pay-per-view event of 2011 where tables, ladders and chairs are all legal. Former Click members Triple H and Kevin Nash face each other in a ladder match with a sledgehammer hanging above the ring. Whoever can climb up and grab the weapon can inflict massive damage without ramifications. World Heavyweight Champion Mark Henry and Big Show lock horns in a slugfest of gigantic proportions with each looking to maim his opponent with chairs. Plus, WWE Champion CM Punk defends his title against both The Miz and Alberto Del Rio in a chaotic triple threat TLC match that will test the physical and mental limits of all three men. So guys, let's go over the stats with you quickly. So this was from December 18th, 2011, uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. At the first uh, Marina Arena. That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> Attendance was 9,000 and the buy rate was 179,000 for that evening. Uh, we had Zack Ryder uh, defeat Dolph Ziggler for the WWE United States Championship. Um, back then, it didn't really mean much to me. Zack Ryder never did back there, uh, back in those days. But rewatching this entire t uh, 2011 year of WWE and what uh, Zack Ryder has gone on to accomplish in recent years, very recently as well as uh, Matt Cardona, I really appreciate his uh, his reign uh, or his win here for the U U.S. Championship, and he. He definitely deserved it. But back then, like I said, I didn't really acknowledge it much. And I, and I regret that. I should have took more note, notice of him as a uh, wrestler. And, you know, but yeah, rewatching this back and I'm glad I did. That was very cool. The match itself wasn't a five star classic or anything, but I did appreciate that. And yeah, Zach uh, picking up the victory over Ziggler. 
who had Vicky Guerrero with him at ringside. Yeah, very good stuff. And yeah, Zack Ryder, one of those wrestlers who I like now and I didn't like back then. It's strange how wrestling works. But it is for me. I don't know if it happens to any of you guys. Let me know in the comments below. Do I, does there a, is there a, sorry guys, let's try again. Is there a particular wrestler that you didn't like back in the day and you go back and revisit some old school wrestling pay-per-views or events or whatever and then you come across them again and you think oh he was pretty cool actually why didn't i like him back then the same thing happened to me with gold dust as well guys i didn't like him to begin with in the 90s but when he got electrocuted i started appreciating him a bit more re-watching uh, some of his stuff with booker t in that like in recent years but yeah moving on we had Air Boom against Primo and Epico for the WWE Tag Team Championship. That wasn't a very good tag match, I thought. Um, yeah, I didn't really think a lot of it. Uh, could have been better. There could have been better contenders than Primo and Epico. No disrespect to the guys, but they just didn't seem suited to the... Uh, they did seem suited to the tag division at the time, but... it. They seemed like a weaker tag team compared to the other tag teams that could have been on offer at that in that time period, if that makes sense. Uh, Randy Orton against Wade Barrett in a tables match was pretty cool. I did enjoy that one. And uh, I believe the right person won, uh, Randy Orton. Sorry about all the spoilers as well, guys. Beth Phoenix against Kelly Kelly for the WWE Divas Championship. I, I just yawned at that one. I thought, again, oh my days. But surprisingly, it wasn't bad for a, a, like a five minute kind of match or it was a quite a short match. It was around five minutes. I'm sure it was. But yeah, it was good for what it was. Kevin Ash took on Triple H uh, in a sledgehammer ladder match with the sledgehammer dangling uh, down to be retrieved once you climb the ladder. Sounds good. Uh, if, it, if it took place, say, 10 years prior to this, definitely. But um, by this time, you know, Kevin Nash... I think he was in his 50s then his both his knees are shot and obviously triple h starting to slow down a bit you know showing some you know age and stuff he was in his uh possibly mid 40s then early to mid 40s sorry if i got that wrong guys but i'm just trying to think in my head that their ages but no disrespect to them both they gave it a good go it went on longer than what it should have it felt like quite a drag to be honest but it, it was funnish, but not a, not a five star, like I said about the uh, Zack Ryder match earlier. But maybe worth checking out. But like I said, I wish it took place like 2001, 2002, maybe rather than 2011. It would have been a lot better to see those two go at it then. And they did have a brief feud uh, in 2003, I do believe, because I remember that Hell in a Cell match at Bad Blood. That was pretty cool. See, that was good. That was a lot better. Just my opinion though guys next up Seamus and Jack Swagger um, yeah this could have been like a match saved for Smackdown or Raw so it you know it didn't really matter it was quite an, another quite short match as well but yeah you know I'd probably give it like two and a half stars or something if I had to rate it it wasn't fantastic it was just like a filler kind of match Another match between Mark Henry and Big Show for the World Heavyweight Championship. It was a chairs match. This was kind of short, but it, it was it was good. I, I did enjoy it. And Big Show finally defeated Mark Henry as well to become World Heavyweight Champion. Really good stuff. Mark Henry, I really did enjoy his uh, run as World Champion rewatching this year, this particular year as well. So a, a few good high points from 2011. Uh, definitely that's another one of them uh, but afterwards <laughs> we had Daniel Bryan cash in his uh, money in the bank briefcase on Big Show and defeat him for the World Heavyweight Championship so that kind of uh, well not ruin the moment sometimes that does become annoying for me but I've started to get used to it now watching money in the bank cash ins and stuff and if it's a wrestler you really care about, you know, and they've just won the championship and then they get robbed of it seconds later with a stupid cash in it. And then obviously you feel gutted and pissed off. But I can make an exception for this time because Big Show's been a world champion before. 
and uh, I'm sure he didn't mind dropping it to Daniel Bryan. <laughs> but yeah, fair play to Daniel Bryan. Uh, Booker T and uh, Cody Rhodes went at it for uh, Cody Rhodes uh, Intercontinental Championship. Surprisingly, a very good match as well. P possibly one of my favourites of that night. Um, Cody Rhodes retained, which was quite a shocker, really. That's a pretty big victory for Cody Rhodes at that point of his career. Because he was still a rising star, in my opinion, you know, at that point. To see him defeat a legend like Booker T, a former five-time world heavyweight champion. Five-time, 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 five-time WCW champion. That's the one I was trying to say. Sorry, guys. But yeah. Really good match. Then we had the main event. CM Punk defending his champ uh, WWE championship against The Miz and Alberto Del Rio in a um, tables, ladders and chairs match. Yeah, triple threat. Very good. Yeah, very good stuff. Not as good as the Rhodes and Booker T match, but it was pretty cool. And uh, CM Punk got to retain as well. Thank God for that. I was expecting him to lose it again to Alberto Del Rio because I completely forgot most of the title changes throughout these uh, particular years. Uh, 2010 to 2013 kind of time period. Some of the title changes are blurs. And around this kind of time, I did think that Punk dropped it to uh, Del Rio again. But yeah, no, that wasn't the case. But yeah, overall then, guys, they finally got this pay-per-view done as a review. Don't you fucking die on me now, camera. <laughs> yeah, I give it a uh, overall score of 6 out of 10. Give me a thumbs up if I deserve one today. Um, Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave comments by all means. But a quick, uh, go, let me quickly go over 2011 of uh, my highs and lows, I suppose. So, yeah, there were a few good uh, pay-per-views, not great ones. And then obviously we had that disappointing over the limit. Just avoid that one, guys. Capital Punishment was okay. It was, yeah, it was, it was definitely average, I guess. But it was almost down there with Over the Limit at the same time. It's really hard for me to explain. Just go and watch all my reviews again for the scores and everything and my views on each and every one of them. But yeah, like I said, Zack Ryder and Mark Henry, you know, I've come to see them in a more respectable way re-watching this year again. And that's a good thing. I can appreciate wrestlers again by re-watching some of the history of pay-per-views again. And... If 2012 is a year that you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm sorry it's took this long. I've had health problems uh, and other things happening as well. But we finally got there. We finally accomplished it. Let's wrap up 2011 now of the, the year in review for WWE. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. You stay safe. Take good care of yourselves. Peace.